Good evening, this is uh, Megan McArdle, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the uh, start of the American Revolution. So, it, in my opinion, may have started at the French and Indian War, because at the first discovery of this continent, there was French here, Spain, Spaniards here, and British here, all trying to basically develop this continent at the same time. And the British and the French got into an altercation, Indians were involved, this became known as the French and Indian War. Later this war exploded in, or evolved into a seven year war, that, which involved the same group of people. Um, the British colony did, or the British, the colonial British, um, they did triumph in the end. Uh, they ended up with most, I would say, all of the territory in Northern America, or what we now call America. It was given to them by the Spaniards and the French. Now, they also acquired a hefty war debt. How are they going to pay for this? Well, the people they left behind, or the people that are now developing the new country, or the new territories, they're going to tax them. Why not? They've got all this new stuff, they've got new resources, things they can sell to ship back home, so they're going to implement new taxes on the new colonies to pay for their war debt. They implemented the Sugar Act of 1764 and the Stamp Act of 1765 in an attempt to finance their war debt. Now, Colin Scott fell it up with basically getting taxed without representation. They boycotted British goods. This became a problem between the British Parliament in their attempt to acquire money to finance their war debt and the colonists who were basically trying to make a new life for themselves. And they didn't trust the British colony. They were basically afraid because the King, King George III implemented a coercive act on the colonies which basically said, I could tax you for whatever, I could take your home, I can run you out of town, I could throw you in jail, and there's nothing you can do about it. So this really scared a lot of colonies, uh, or colonial, I mean, sorry, uh, yeah, colonists. So this really like worried a bunch of people, and they eventually sent 56 delegates to Philadelphia in 1774, and that became known as the Continental Congress. A bunch of people from all of the colonies got together in an attempt to try to figure out what they were going to do about the current British situation, and they put Minutemen, which are militiamen, on notice to be ready at a minute's time because they knew the king was eventually going to get fed up with the boycotts and the retaliate or rebellion. So uh, King George sends about a thousand troops to Boston uh, and they accidentally fire into a crowd of colonists, uh, killing five colonists. This made, you know, revolutionary propaganda. People started like really doubting the current situation and things like that. And um, so they rebelled, they ran the British back all the way across the ocean, I think in like 125 boats or something like that, they, they fled back home, the king was super mad, he sends 3,000 troops back, and the coercive acts, and that's what really set it off, these colonists were like, we're not going to have it, and the king sent over a bunch of troops to basically uh, neutralize Massachusetts. And there was a battle of Lexington that erupted. This became known as a shot fired around the world because uh, it's believed that the British accidentally fired into the colonists and then ran them up to the city of Concord in which the militiamen drove the British all the way back to Boston. This really put their foot down and made the world know that they were ready for conflict at a minute's notice. So that is why I believe the shot heard around the world was the start of the American Revolution. Thank you and have a great night.